So we have the placement between the vocal and the uh, mic down, but what about the placement of the mic in relation to the room? Now here are our enemies. We don't want reflections off the walls to become part of the sound, so we need to minimize that as much as, as we can. Now in a cardioid mic, the rear of the mic, as we said before, is less sensitive than the front. Its job is to reject most of the sound at the back of that microphone. So optimally, we should just hear the sound of our voice coming in the front. But here's the problem. The sound of our voice is bouncing all around the room and then has a habit of bouncing off the wall behind us and mixing in with the dry vocal uh, coming from our mouth. So the area you want to deaden is actually directly behind you. We want to capture those reflections and slow them down and really the best way to do that is with absorbent a material like foam or heavy drapes. You can spend a fortune uh, doing it acoustically treating uh, your recording environment, but uh, we'll look at the techniques that will give you kind of the most bang for your buck here. Just hang a, sleeping, a, a heavy sleeping bag or moving blanket behind you from these walls. Uh, in all our acoustic treatments, we want to give a little space be behind the baffles to help them do their, their job, so you want to take that just off the wall there. You also want to be as far into the room as you possibly can, avoiding the dead middle of the room, which can bring up special problems in terms of its uh, standing waves and so on. So avoid the, the, the dead middle of the room. To help catch the sound behind you before it uh, starts bouncing around the room, you can place foam behind the microphone or you can buy ready-made solutions from uh, SE Electronics makes some like this. Check out the uh, reflection filters like these that are available in a couple of different sizes. They really help dry up the sound of your vocal isolating those reflections before they start getting too uh, far into the room. Now having said that, one of the best ready-made solution in most people's living spaces is the old walk-in closet. You normally have a bunch of thick coats and sweaters that naturally soak up those reflections. Uh, most have carpeted floors, so really the ceiling is the only uh, reflective surface that you're um, normally, you know, that uh, you're dealing with, so you're normally good to go. I'll be careful if it's very small though, it may introduce new problems and give you kind of a boxy sound. But if you have, uh, if you don't have a walk-in closet, then a living room with some hung blankets or down comforters uh, behind you, a foot or two away from the wall is probably normally the, the best bet. Okay, so let's look at the big problems. These are the big problems that are waiting in the wings to completely destroy uh, your recordings. Um, we looked at the signal path in the last section and that you want to invest in a nice mic cable with good solid connections. No hum buzzers or noise there. It'll be basically impossible to, to successfully take that kind of crap out of your recording once it gets in. In terms of distortion, make sure that your signal levels are, are not too hot to induce distortion because once you distort, you kind of sunk. Although you can always go back and punch in on that particular phrase. We'll look at punch-ins uh, in a minute. Now one safeguard that you can, you might be able to employ you know, on some recording setups is you can split your mic input into two channels and set the second channel to be about 6 dB lower than the first. You could then record that second lower signal onto a safety track that you'll always, so you'll always have a non-distorted backup that you could easily edit in and amp up if needed. I, I kind of hesitate to say this because some of your uh, setups may allow for this, some may not. Certainly all of us can punch in and repair sus uh, distorted phrases and we'll explore that uh, in just a minute. Now in terms of unwanted sounds, this goes to the principle that we talked about before where we want to isolate our recording from all the other stuff, things like vibrations through the floor, they can be reduced by using a shock mount. Uh, plosives uh, can be reduced by pop filters. Um, low frequency rumble can be reduced by low cut filters on the mic or on the mixer channel, remember where we could take off 80 hertz and below. Reflections can be reduced by treating the acoustic space with blankets and reflection filters. A uh, closed cut headphones reduce the amount of spill coming from our headphone mix back into our vocal mic. By the way, many vocalists like to leave one ear off of the headphones to kind of help with their pitch and just kind of sing better. Make sure the headphone cut that is off is solidly seated against your head so it doesn't bleed into the mic. Quite often you can uh, place the headphone connector, this is the jack, about halfway into the jack instead of all the way in there. That'll cut out the sound of just one ear. So all of these precautions uh, serve to strip everything back and leave us just with the cleanest, driest signal we can get 
and then and only then can we start to record. Okay, so once we're set to record, the process of assigning uh, the input to a track, it's different between all of our machines. So I'll leave that to you and your manual. Or you could certainly pick a uh, user, one of our DVDs uh, that explains all of this specifically for your model. I'll just assume that you can assign that mic into a channel and uh, you can assign a track. Once you've set the recording level so that the peaks are safely under the distortion level, by the way, you can easily test this by making a number of test recordings with different uh, recording levels and go back and listen to those results with headphones listening intently for distortion. Take some time to do this as it's really quite time consuming to fix distorted vocals. So that being said, all that's really left to be done is just press record and play and record. Now one thing I will say to you is you might want to add just a hint of reverb to the vocalist headphone mix to help their performance, but I would definitely not record that reverb. In fact, I'd keep the recording void of any effects except perhaps a small amount of compression um, like we said in the last section. Although with a dynamic range of most recorders, now I mostly don't record with compression at all uh, anymore. You can fix that uh, afterwards. Now with the popularity of auto-tune recently, which corrects the pitch of vocals, please do not add any auto-tune to the headphone mix as your vocalist will then lean on that technology and really put in a sloppy kind of performance. It's better to have them hear exactly what's going on. You can fix that tuning later on but it's best to give them a really a true representation of what's going on to help aid them in uh, uh, you know, turning in an on-pitch performance. Now, once you get a good performance, you'll probably want to double the vocal, and it's up to you whether you uh, maybe want to double the whole thing or just the chorus and bridge. I mean, it can't hurt doubling the whole thing because you can always you know, fade that double part out and um, just put it in, in and out on the course of the song. It's really up to you in terms of whether your vocalist is fatigued or not. To hear an example of great doubling, just listen up to this one. 